rock on Tommy. It's Ed Bud, and I'm back today with a 100 mile update on the ASICS Nova Blast. I wasn't too sure about this flight foam blast shoe when it first appeared on my doorstep, but I have got up to 100 miles in it and I've actually enjoyed getting there. Today I've got a special guest, your friend, he's my friend, Mr. Kafuzi. The shoe sensei will be helping us out today with the 100 mile update. How are you doing, Mike? Yo, what's going on everybody? Kafuzi here coming to you from the basement here in Guttenberg, Iowa. Thanks Ed so much for having me on the channel again and I am super excited to talk to you guys about the ASICS Nova Blast and what I thought about this shoe over the last 100 miles. I guess first what I'll do is I'll go over kind of like generally what I thought. I generally thought that this was a shoe that was, I don't know, it was a surprise to me at first. I mean I knew it was going to be soft coming in but I felt like this might be too soft. I'm not sure I can run on this. My knees are a little bit concerned because like there's just so much movement in this shoe. It just felt really unstable. That all kind of mellowed out and went away over the last 100 miles. And I came to enjoy this shoe more and more with the time that I had with it. So we'll start with the upper first. I found that there's a little extra room in the upper here. I think you could probably jettison that and get the shoe down a little bit in weight. It's only compounded as well when you press into that midfoot foam. You just get even more space above your foot there. So I think they could have just reduced the amount of upper. Why so generous, Asics? Just a little bit too much material there. Perhaps they could just scale it back a bit. If we're in the perfect world, but I sometimes think it's a bit like the princess in the pea, isn't it? I did switch up the laces on my Nova Blast, as you can see here. These are the ones from my Fuel Cell Rebels, I believe. Those thin blue ones just didn't work for me. They felt a little bit like a cheese cutter. They really did cut into my precious pointers and they went really too elastic. That improved the lockdown over the top of my foot greatly. I think they were very short as well from what I remember. I couldn't really use a runner's knot or anything with those short blue laces. So yeah, they stayed firmly in the box. So if anybody wants a set of overly short, thin blue laces, you know who to come to. No real major concerns on the upper, apart from the shoe's incredible ability to soak up water in one rain-soaked run in the Nova Blast. When I got back in, I weighed the shoe and it was 375 grams. So it had taken on about 65 grams worth of moisture and water. I think it was mainly in the tongue and the heel area. Hmm, I think I sense a new Ed Bud test coming on. The shoe water retention test. What do you think guys? So I'm gonna give the ASICS Nova Blast an updated upper score of 2.4 out of three. A few marks off for those poor laces in the overly generous upper. What do you think, Kafuzi? Now the upper, this is uh, something that's held up really well. I run in uh, street conditions when I was running with this shoe in Chicago. Uh, I also ran with it here in the rural conditions here where I'm on dirt roads. Uh, I'm also on country roads, uphills, downhills, and kind of everything in between. And the upper's holding up fantastically. It's a little bit dirty uh, from the dirt roads out here, but other than that, you could hardly tell that this is a 100 mile shoe. It's holding up well, but I kind of wish it weren't because I just think that the upper here is, is a little bit of a mess. There's just a lot going on here. It's very busy. There's overlays, there's layers, there's reflective portions, there's patterns. There's just a, a lot of busyness that's happening that I feel like is unnecessary and just kind of adds weight a little bit where we don't really need it. The other thing that's really strange about this shoe is the laces. They're really thin, almost like, like an angel hair pasta in here. And it's just really uh, unusual for an upper that's so bulky to then have uh, laces that are so thin. It just seems to be like a really weird mismatch. I would have thought that this would have had like a medium or even a thicker lace on it. Not necessarily like a stretchy lace like you might see like on the Saucony Triumph 17. Those are puffy and stretchy. I don't like those laces either, but this is something that I don't like in the complete opposite direction where it's just really weird. And there's a lot of lace too. It's just really, really long. I think they're assuming that you're gonna use a runner's knot on here. I don't use a runner's knot. So I just ended up with a lot of lace. It ended up fitting okay for me. Like all these things that I'm complaining about all were mainly cosmetic issues uh, for me. None of them ended up being problems. But another thing that I've noticed with this upper is that it's big. At first I thought it was like nice and comfortably roomy, but the more I ran in it, the more I realized this is more than just roomy. I feel like the sizing might be off by a little bit. Not like, I don't want to say to people to size down, but it might be like a quarter size off. 
it's just a little bit too roomy. And so I felt myself uh, cinching the laces down quite a bit uh, in order to stay stable in there. I never felt like my foot was gonna come out of this shoe. I never felt unstable in the upper because it was too big, but it also made it feel like a little, it was a little bit harder to run faster in the shoe because I wasn't really locked down quite as much as I would like. At the paces that I prefer running the shoe in, which were easy paces, moderate, maybe moderate paces, but easy and long run paces, it generally felt fine, but it was like a bit too roomy. So overall on a score of one to three, I'd probably give the upper a one. It's holding up great. It's just not a great upper for me. Onto the midsole now, my favorite bit. I think I was perhaps a little harsh on this shoe in terms of the midsole after my initial run. I got quite a lot of heat from some people about that. I said, you're really harsh, man, on that Nova Blast. Don't know what you're talking about. It just goes to show you can't always judge a book by the first couple of chapters. I found that the shoe became a lot more manageable after about 20 or 30 miles. It really did become my go-to easy day shoe. It really did mellow out that midsole. Came a little bit more stable. You can run faster paces in this shoe. It really is quite squishily comfortable. Is that proper English? I don't know. And it's certainly got a very forgiving forefoot feel. Left the pads of my right foot feeling caressed. Something like that. I think I do have my doubts still about this shoe if you're a more intense heel striker. I just think it's far too unstable for that. But switching up to a midfoot to forefoot strike and you're good to go. I'm not sure it'd be my choice for a tempo day type shoe. That midsole's just too squashy for me. I think I have been won over a little bit though by Flight Foam Blast. So I'm gonna give the midsole on my 100 mile review 2.5 out of three. It's cushioned, it's quite forgiving in nature, but I do think it comes with a bit of a speed penalty when you do try and raise up the energy levels and the pace. Mr. K, what do you think of the midsole on the Nova Blast? Now, when I'm talking about the midsole, I think that the midsole here is just absolutely fantastic. I did have a lot of issues with it at first, not because it was uncomfortable, but because it was too comfortable. I felt like in the midfoot, especially every time I put my foot down, it was like squishing around like this. I felt like I had no support. It reminded me in a lot of ways of Ultra Boost, but the Ultra Boost that doesn't have a torsion bar in here. Cause I don't think there's anything that prevents torsion or like this kind of twisting in the shoe. And so I felt like combined with the extra cushioned material and the lack of any like torsional stability, I felt like this was just too wobbly of a shoe. Fortunately, that went away after about 20 miles or so, and then it kind of mellowed out, the material kind of compressed a little bit, just so that way I still had a very comfortable shoe, but one that no longer felt unstable. So I ended up really liking the shoe, and I especially appreciated all this stuff back here on some of the downhill runs that I have here. So we have some steep uphills, it's a very steep downhills, and it's just really great to have extra material back in here to absorb some of those downhill paces. Uh, so I found it really enjoyable. This shoe definitely reminds me a lot of the older Ultra Boosts that I've run in before, which uh, are super comfortable to walk around in, but also pretty good, very good even, to run in as well. Although a lot of people might give you flack for running a long distance. I've run up to half marathon distances in older Ultra Boosts and everyone's like, you can't run in those. I kind of feel like this shoe feels very similar to that, but I prefer this to the older Ultra Boost because while I do feel a bit of a speed penalty in all that comfort and all that cushion, when your foot hits the ground, it kind of sinks in just a little bit. I don't feel quite as much of that speed penalty in the flight foam blast that they have in this midsole. So I'm getting a really great compromise of the both of those two worlds, speed and cushion. So I'm really liking this midsole material. I'm really excited for what this could mean for ASICs and where they're gonna use it in the future. So on a scale of one to three, I'm gonna give it a three. We're talking high abrasion rubber, ASICs, high abrasion rubber plus. I've said it before and I'll say it again. How high abrasion does rubber need to be? It certainly is the real deal. I did see a video the other day of somebody putting their Nova Blast up against a belt sander and it still gave a good account of itself. I think it's as durable and tough as Vinnie Jones in his prime. There's only a small amount of wear here in the midfoot and a little bit on the very outer section of the heel. Typical areas I would expect to see a little bit of wear at 100 miles. That side, it's looking pretty good. So I think as with most ASICs offerings, you'll get a huge ton of miles 
out of this shoe. I don't think you're going to see too many durability issues with it. Is there too much rubber, you could say? You may say that. I'm not going to say it. I'm always thinking of minimising the weight of a shoe and could you just have trimmed a little bit off there? A little bit of off the upper, perhaps? Slightly less midsole foam? Just think about that. I think doing that would have made the shoe a tad more versatile. At 310 grams, it is a little bit on the heavier side. So I think outsole score after 100 miles for me is going to be 2.7 out of 3. I think it's holding up better than most at the 100 mile stage. Kafuzi, what do you reckon of the outsole on your Nova Blast? Moving to the outsole, I think the outsole is uh, a breath of fresh air from what uh, Asics normally has been doing, where they just load up the entire outsole with pretty much as much rubber as they can get away with. They've done the opposite here, where it's really minimal. You're actually on the midsole material itself. And you can see where it's discolored a little bit, the midsole material, because of the surfaces that I'm running on. Uh, but that's all cosmetic. There is a little bit of wear happening on the rubber itself in terms of it wearing down but it's not an undue amount of wear. And I feel like I've been asking ASICs for a long time to cut the amount of rubber that's on here. Give me less. I'm okay with it wearing down a little bit. Uh, and that's exactly what they have here. The rubber is still holding up fantastically, better than I was expecting based on the design of the rubber here. It's the kind of design that looks like it's just creates these little nubs that look very susceptible to wearing down. They are a bit, but it's about what I would expect for a hundred mile shoe. Now, for those of you who are used to ASICs and getting like 600 miles out of your ASICs, you're gonna feel like this is probably unacceptable. But for those of you who are more like me who get about 300 to 350 miles out of a shoe, this is gonna feel just about right. So I feel like the outsole is doing a fantastic job here. I never had any issues with slip or grip on any of the variety of surfaces or whether wet or dry that I run on. So I'm really enjoying what they've done with the outsole here. So I'm gonna give it a three. Got to talk value now. It's very important to talk value. I think at hundred pounds actually, this presents some pretty reasonable value for this shoe. It's a good everyday shoe. You can grab it, you can put it on all sorts of weather. The other day I was out running this, it was freezing cold, it was raining, it was windy, and now it's 31 degrees Celsius outside. I am so hot, it feels like I'm sat on the sun. I think you could possibly improve on the upper a little bit, minimize it down slightly. I think there's some superb durability there, if that's what you're after in a shoe. If you want miles for your earth credits, this is probably the place to go. Do expect some breaking though in this shoe. It took about 20 to 30 miles for me before it mellowed out a little bit, like a Donovan's song. Was it Mellow Yellow, isn't it? That's the one. That's what this shoe is. This shoe's gonna be called Mellow Yellow from now on, even though it only has one small yellow section on it. Something tells me that this design from Asics is them testing the water a little bit. It's almost like a prototype to me. Perhaps a shoe that could be the start of a new group of shoes from Asics. I will be discussing this with Kafuzi very soon. Perhaps even now, I could be talking to you from the future or the past or the present. I think if you're after a lighter everyday shoe, this probably isn't the one to go for. There are some other lighter options out there that are a little cheaper. That side, I think it presents some reasonable value. I'm going to give it a 2.6 out of 3 for value. Kafuzi, how do you think this one holds up in terms of value? I did give the shoe uh, the upper a one rating, uh, but I did give it a three in the midsole and the outsole, the two areas where I think it really counts. I feel like you can only ruin a shoe in the upper, uh, but you're gonna really win it in the midsole and the outsole combo. So overall, I'm gonna give this shoe a three out of three because I just think it's a fantastic shoe. One that I definitely slept on because I wasn't sure if this was really a running shoe at first, but let me assure you that it definitely is. I think it's great for your everyday training, your easy runs and your long runs. Anytime when you want a little bit of extra comfort for that run, this is where I would definitely be reaching for that shoe. So at 100 miles, I give this one a 10.2 out of 12. That's not a bad score. Certainly a much higher score than I gave in my initial review. I think perhaps I was a little harsh on it to start with, but I will admit that a shoe hasn't changed quite so much over the initial miles as this one. It really has altered its characteristics somewhat, apart from the upper, which just seems to have got bigger. <laughs> I think in a shoe world where braking isn't quite so important or prevalent, the Nova Blast is the exception. Thank you, Kafuzi, for guesting on the 100 mile Nova Blast update today. It's always a pleasure to have you on the show. Take care, buddy.
and keep an eye out for those spiders. Ed, thanks so much for having me on the channel and inviting me back so I could talk to you guys about my thoughts. Hopefully you guys are staying safe out there on your runs and I'll see you in the next one. What are your views on the ASICS Nova Blast viewers? If you wouldn't mind, send me a video of your views to edbudshootube at gmail.com. I'm gonna to compile together a viewer's review of this shoe. Hit me up with those comments down below. A musical interlude. So with the weather warming up, I've got images in my mind of Elvis. What a great album, great atmosphere. It just makes you feel cooler just listening to it. I'm stood in front of these studio lights now, and I feel that all of the midsoles of my shoes are gonna melt. There's some wonderful love songs on this one. I really do enjoy listening to this on vinyl. It sounds even better. Just makes me wanna grab the ukulele again and play along with Elvis. But I can't do that, so if only Elvis was still with us. What a legend. It's very few men can pull off wearing an all-in-one outfit like that, especially with a huge eagle on the back of it as well. Do go and take a listen to that one, guys, and be transported to Hawaii in the 60s. Hope you've enjoyed the 100 mile review today with our guest Kafuzi. If you're enjoying the channel and you haven't done so already, please do hit the subscribe button and click the bell for notifications below of when new videos are launched. It really helps the channel out massively if you give this video a thumbs up like and don't forget to share it with your running buddies. My name's Ed Bud and I'll be seeing you 